Welcome to Powered by Snowflake, where I interview technology leaders building businesses and applications on Snowflake. I'm your host, Daniel Myers, and today I'm talking with Will Lau, Chief Operating Officer of Panther. Panther is a real-time threat detection, investigation, and incident response platform, and it's powered by Snowflake. Will, how are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Daniel. I'm excited to be chatting with you today, and really to kick this off, I want to learn more about you, your background, and in your own words, describe what does Panther do? My background was in identity and access management. I spent about eight years building a company called Glue, um, and we served a number of universities, federal government agencies, large consumer electronics providers, and that was my real introduction both to enterprise IT as well as security. I've been with Panther for about two years. I stood up the business there. Panther is a data platform for security, essentially. Security has really turned into a data problem. Our security practitioners are drowning in data, and Panther provides them the big data foundation and infrastructure and the developer-led principles that they need to analyze that data and drive signal from all of that noise. It's really interesting that you mentioned that it's, you know, it, security has become a data-centric problem, yeah. right? I, I see that more and more across all industries. Tell me more about kind of the history of Panther. Uh, when was it founded and, and how big is it today? Panther was founded in August of 2018 and it was really a spin-off of an open source project at Airbnb. So the founder and CEO, Jack Naglieri, and his small security team at Airbnb, they needed something new that could keep up with the amount of data that Airbnb was generating. The existing tools on the market just weren't built for that level of scale. So Jack and team built this open source project called StreamAlert at Airbnb. They open sourced it. They ran it at Airbnb for a couple of years. It started getting quite a bit of adoption in the community. So companies like Coinbase, Duo, Intercom, these high growth startups really started gravitating towards this open source project. And that was essentially the, the thesis that there was a business opportunity here. Jack, by kind of like good fortune, met an investor who wanted to take a bet on him, pulled him out of a security department and uh, gave him a million bucks to start the company. That is a really, really cool origin story for Panther. You know, tell me more about, you know, how does Snowflake fit into this story um, and can you show me kind of a, a high level diagram of, of the, the tech stack that you've built? Yeah. So Snowflake is at the, the, the center or the foundation of the product that we've built. As I mentioned, security has really turned into a data problem. And like you said, many, many industries are, are, are starting to trend in this direction as well, where we're both trying to deliver functional value. But in order to do that with today's data scales, we need the big data foundation that Snowflake provides. So Snowflake is essentially our data cloud that powers the whole product. I can show you a quick diagram about how Panther works on top of Snowflake. If you take a look at my screen here, you can see that we have our cloud data sources on the left. Panther pulls all of this data from your cloud environments, your host environments, your networks, your applications, SaaS on-premise, um, custom. Pulls that through its processing engine. It parses and normalizes this data. Essentially, we have this raw data that needs to get cleaned and formatted in order for proper analysis to happen. So Panther does all of that in its processing pipelines, and then it sends the data down into Snowflake for long-term retention, investigations, and contextual threat analysis. That's pretty impressive. Can you tell me more about you know, some of the data sources and, and what types of data are you gathering from these sources? Um, primarily audit logs. So audit logs can contain like, the trail of information that, that uh, corresponds to the activity that's happening inside of these systems. So when a security event happens, the first question that people want to understand is, or not the first, but the first like five is who, what, when, where, why, right? And you get this type of information from audit logs. However, audit logs are notoriously verbose. They're messy. They can be very, very difficult for a human's brain to literally parse and understand. And so we have to have automation um, in this pipeline. And the volume of these logs has gotten huge as our, as our environments have expanded. So I think the common nomenclature is something like, as systems move to the cloud, they get 10x noisier. And so as all of our organizations have gone into the cloud, we've just produced an abundance of new data that security teams need to gather, collect, retain for long periods of time. I think every year Verizon puts out its breach report and typically the numbers are around 270 days until a security event is identified. And so 
you start looking at these environments, you say, okay, well, we're getting five, 10, 15 terabytes of audit logs that we need to capture and analyze every single day, but we have to store these things for 270, 300 days, sometimes up to seven years or 10 years based on industry regulations. And so like, this is just not possible in, in a DIY type of cloud data warehouse solution. So we need big vendor, well-supported, well-maintained platforms like Snowflake has provided. It really seems like the scale that Snowflake is able to provide out of the box is a, a pretty core element and required for your customers in order to leverage a product like Panther. A, a big part of security teams has been ops teams. You need ops teams to manage tools like Splunk. You need ops teams to manage processing pipelines. And this has become such a burden on organizations, like the burden to getting any security insights is standing up all of this infrastructure. And essentially Snowflake has enabled us and our customers to get value very, very quickly from their data. So what you could do with a team of 20, you can now do with a team of two. That's impressive. Can we see a live demo of it today? Of course, of course. I'd be happy to show you a live demo. I always like to level set with just a couple of quick slides. So as we had shown, uh, this is a high level architecture overview. So we have all of our data sources that are coming through Panther parsing, normalizing, analyzing that data, triggering out alerts to incident management systems like PagerDuty or Slack or Asana, wherever the security team wants to keep track of their security events. We take these raw logs, so this is like a raw web server log. As you can see, it'd be very difficult to find information from this log. So Panther parses and normalizes this, so we parse it, we take a raw log, we turn it into a JSON object, which makes it nice and pretty for us to read and review. And then we standardize information and data that's going to be consistent across a number of different types of sources. So you're going to find IP addresses pop up in a lot of systems. You're going to find domain names, log types, usernames, email addresses. That type of data we normalize for our teams. And so what this enables you to do is search data very quickly. We're always looking for an IP address and where did that IP address pop up in the systems. When we parse and normalize, we take that IP address, we put it into a column in Snowflake. And now when I look for that proverbial needle in the haystack, it's quite a bit easier for us to find. Um, once we have parsed and normalized data, we can now apply code to it um, effectively. And this is one of the big value props of Panther is that you can write these, you know, you can write these detections which trigger alerts with extreme flexibility using Python. So this enables you to express a ton of custom business logic. It allows you to bootstrap functionality by using libraries, helpers, variables. So you get all of these like developer best practices out of the box and you can analyze all of this data very efficiently. So with that being said, just a couple of things to level set. I'll take you through the product and we can um, look through a couple of workflows. When you step into the product, you are shown an overview that shows you some of your alerts and some of your most active detections. We can go ahead and jump into one of these alerts and walk through the workflow of how we got there. So here's an alert for a test administrator assuming a role from an unknown location. So this is the type of thing that a security team might want to know about. We have it tagged as a low severity event because we're not going to raise a critical alarm every time something like this happens, but it is something that our security team wants to log and be aware of. Um, in certain use cases, we might send this to an automation system and have the automation system follow up with the user and say, is this recognized? Do you understand this? Do you know who did this? We can see that we had four events that triggered this alert. So security teams see a lot of activity. They don't want an alert for every piece of activity. They want to deduplicate all of those events and collapse them into one alert. Panther gives you the flexibility of doing this. And we can see some of the data that triggered some of these alerts. So some of these highlighted fields are things that we might be interested in evaluating to better understand what happened in the system. So if we look at an IP address, which is a very, very common indicator of compromise, we can see that this came from 73.92.62.201, and we can take a look at this IP, uh, IP address and see where else this popped up in our logs. What other systems did this, per, did this IP, show, uh, IP address show up in? We can set a couple of dates, and I'll tab over because I have it, um, I have it already ran. You can see that we scanned uh, about 50 megabytes of data in 15 seconds, and we found this IP address popped up in a couple of different systems. So it came up in our cloud trail, in our logs, and in our rule matches. So essentially, this IP address was found in a couple of alerts, and it was found in four log events. If we wanted to drill in on this even further, we could click one of these buttons, and we could tab out, and this will open up a data explorer window that's, as you can see, powered by Snowflake, sitting right on top of Snowflake, 
Um, the SQL is pre-generated for you, but this is essentially a SQL workbook. So you can um, customize this, uh, this search, you can pivot around, and you can start investigating this type of activity. This is pretty impressive and exciting to see how Snowflake really does power something like this. It's everything. And I love how you mentioned, you know, finding that proverbial needle in the haystack, right? And being able to do that with this type of, of data explorer, the amount of data that you're able to, to glean um, is, is really impressive. Can you talk about and explain what in particular, what was your, your, the types of considerations that you had when evaluating Snowflake? We were looking for a partner. When we identified Snowflake as a partner, it was not just a technical partner, it was a go-to-market partner. So we needed to find alignment in the vision that security really was a data problem, and Snowflake had that in spades. So that was a really, really important piece of the decision. But architecturally, when we made this decision two plus years ago, you know, Snowflake was the best platform out on the market, it still is today. The architecture is, is great for, for scaling. We love the fact that you can scale up and down warehouses to make queries go faster. So that's something that is really, really important to security teams when they need an answer, they need an answer fast and they're happy to pay a few dollars more to get that answer in five minutes instead of five hours or five days. The other part that, that's really interesting in Snowflake is the ecosystem. Your data is only as valuable as the context that you can bring to it. So if you have data in a, on an island, isolated data is not nearly as valuable as data that's connected, that you can gather context and enrich with other sources. And Snowflake's data marketplace is leading the pack in that respect. That's awesome. And I love that you mentioned the data marketplace. I mean, because I definitely see that also throughout the industry. The ability, just like you said, to join and enrich that data is incredibly powerful. And the, the data itself is only as valuable as the action that you're able to take from it, right? Yeah. That context that, you, that you're able to provide. What from here, you know, six months, uh, one year down the line, what's next for Panther and what should your customers get excited about? For us, it's a matter of boiling in more simplicity, making these workflows effortless and elegant. We've given teams a ton of flexibility to go out and build the workflows that are important to their business, and that's one of the most important things that we will keep. But we also want to get people the value faster. So we want to build more drag and drop workflows. We want to expand our catalog of data sources that we can pull in. The more data that you can get in faster, the faster that you can start analyzing data and, and understanding areas of vulnerability and security posture. So getting more data into the system is super important. Um, enrichments. How does all of this data make sense with other data that's available out there in the marketplace? These are all really, really important initiatives that we're working on to make security a little bit easier for the practitioners that have to uh, live and breathe this every day. That is a really exciting vision and roadmap for Panther. For everybody watching here today, where should they go to learn more about you and get in touch with Panther? Go to uh, panther.com, a uh, brand new domain that we just purchased a couple of months ago after our Series B. So it should make it very, very easy to find us. And go ahead and click one of those buttons at the top of the uh, navigation bar. That's awesome. Will, I want to thank you so much for joining me here in the studio today and having this conversation. It's exciting to see everything that Panther's doing, the product that you've built, uh, and the scalability that you're able to achieve with Snowflake. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for all the hard work. Awesome. And for everybody here today watching, if you're looking to build your next application on Snowflake, check out developers.snowflake.com. And be sure and check out the other videos that we have for Powered by Snowflake here on YouTube. Thanks.